Six years of civil war between space marines. Worlds had burned. Brother had battled brother. And whole chapters had been all but destroyed. Chapter Master Luft Hurlm, the commander of the Astral Claws chapter, had led them into heresy and had tried to break away from the Imperium of Man. Committing untold crimes by recruiting thousands of space marines, countless mortal minions and even other space marine chapters. One of his fellow renegade chapters, the Lamenters, was now all but destroyed. Two were left, the fiercely honorable executioners and the cunning Mantis warriors. To bring Huron and his followers to justice, the Imperium sent their finest warriors. Carab Kulm, the chapter master of the Red Scorpions, his fellow Inquisitor commander and over 12 loyal chapters to lead the front. But would even this insane force be enough to break through the fortresses of the Astral Claws and the infamous Halo, I mean Ring of Steel, guarding the homeworld of Badab? For even space marines need to rest and ships need to anchor. But the enemies of the tyrants knew that big guns never tire. Hi, I am Dutch, the gaming storyteller, and I will be your lore guide for today. Today, we will take a look at the second installment of the lore and facts surrounding one of the coolest betrayals in the Warhammer 40k franchise. This betrayal was the Horus Heresy before the Horus Heresy was even explored. The War of Badab. If you haven't already checked out part 1, I strongly suggest watching that first. This engagement can get quite confusing at times. Get yourself some delicious snacks and a cup of your finest beverage. And let's get on with the video. The first six years of the Badab War were a war that could only be fought by space marines. By the sixth year though, Huron's forces were trapped in the empires they'd made for themselves, and even worse, were separated. The Mantis warriors were trapped on their homeworlds, while the executioners ran around like pirates, fighting any loyalist ships they found. These space marines were helping Huron because of honor, and they were looking for a glorious battle. The loyalists couldn't wait, because who knows what Horan would do if they ignored him. Worse, they had to deal with all sorts of problems at the same time, like worlds that rebelled or surprise orc invasions. It was a good thing, probably, that help would soon arrive for the Imperial forces. A single ship showed up. It was spooky, black and projecting ancient names, saying they had been summoned by Holy Terra. They said that their chapter was the Cacaradon Astra, also known as the Space Sharks. The Inquisitor agreed and went aboard, careful for an ambush. There were ancient trophies stricken all over the place, and the space marines that met them in those ancient halls whispered one phrase through sharp teeth, Hill the Emperor. These were really spooky space marines, and even the Inquisitor's own Astartes bodyguards didn't trust them. But the Inquisitor had made his choice. These newcomers, these space sharks, would have a chance to show what they could do by taking on the Mantis warriors in a fair 1v1. The Mantis warriors were independent and clever. They had followed their honor and had sided with the tyrant, but were starting to ask questions once their leader had been killed in what they thought was the Imperium's betrayal. But alas, they had made their choice. They had killed space marines and now they would pay for it. They were trapped on their homeworlds, the Endymion Cluster, and used ambushes to sneak attack the invaders. It had worked before, but now the space sharks were here. The space sharks didn't care how they won. They blew up spaceships and stole what was left for their own fleet. They destroyed every planet they attacked, slaughtering the people and forced the Mantis warriors to listen to their honor and fight to protect them. The Mantis warriors fought bravely and fought cleverly with ambushes, but there weren't enough. The Mantis warriors fought and the Mantis warriors died, killed by the space sharks. Even other loyal space marine chapters, like the Fire Angels, asked not to fight near the sharks ever again, because they saw this as a dishonorable war, an unnecessary slaughter. Honorable or not, the Mantis warriors were defeated, and with them gone now, it was down to just the Astral Claws and their one ally, the Executioners. The Executioners were working with Huron, but they were still in control of how they were working with the Mad Lad. They had shown up on their own, were fighting on their own, and now were doing their own thing. In reality, the Executioners did not fight for Huron or for tax evasion. They fought for honor and glory. Some of the Space Marines fighting them were even old friends from before the war, such as the captain of the Salamanders, Mirsan. During the war, Captain Mirsan attacked a secret Astroclaw base and found that the Astroclaws had stolen gene seed from their enemies. 
This was perhaps the worst thing a space marine could do to another brother. Because Gene Seed is the only way for a chapter to continue making more marines. And this way, they were actively genociding the loyal chapters. Even worse, after leaving the planet, the salamanders were ambushed. The Astroclaws had found out what happened to their secret base and weren't happy. And they had brought friends. The executioners were here, fighting alongside their allies. But the salamanders were brave. But soon, their ship was too damaged to even move. The executioners asked the salamanders to surrender. They promised that the Imperials could leave if they stopped fighting here. The salamanders knew the executioners were honorable and agreed. But the Astroclaws had other ideas. They wanted revenge and they wanted their gene seed back. They obliterated the salamanders, knowing they couldn't fight back. And subsequently blasted all the apothecaries to retake their precious gene seed. When the executioners heard, they were outraged. This was dishonorable. It was a betrayal. And the salamanders told them what their allies had done and how they had been doing it for years. The commander of the executioners knew what he had to do. His wrath was terrifying. He said that the promises made to Huron, the blood oath, were over. The dishonor could only be ended one way, with more blood. Blood for the blood, uh, blood from the astral claws. The executioners attacked their former allies, fighting to destroy them no matter what. They did not care if they died, only if they killed the Astral Claws. The Salamanders retook their ship and the executioners gave them a present, the head of the Astral Claw captain. When Huron found out he had lost his allies, he was pissed. The executioners wouldn't stop attacking him and they knew exactly how to make it hurt, blowing up all his new shiny stuff. Huron and his Astroclaws were now on their own, and they went even crazier. Huron went full heretic with his cope, yelling about how the strong are the strongest on their own, and how the Imperium was useless. The humans under his control had no idea they were heretics before, but now as they destroyed the churches and removed all the Imperial eagles from their armor, they knew what they had gotten themselves into. Huron's astral claws started to wear blood red armor to show the blood they planned to shed, while some of his minions started to run away. There was no way to run from what happened next though. The loyalists invaded the world closest to Badab, Perius. There was an epic battle in space, and the Imperials managed to break through, launching droppots full of red scorpions and exorcist space marines. But sadly, it was a trap. The whole Astral Claws chapter attacked the surface of the planet and Huron was leading them from the front. He was a terrifying warrior, wearing Terminator armor with a deadly relic claw in one hand and a customized heavy flamer in the other. At the same time, his renegade fleet launched a lightning strike against the unsuspecting Imperials and managed to chase away the entire Imperial fleet before they could recoup their brothers on the surface. Huron attacked and the Red Scorpions tried to stop him. They died in droves, until Huron found his target. The Honorable Loyalist, Commander Kulm. Huron and his minions were unstoppable, tearing through Space Marines like wet toilet paper. If Kulm didn't do something, Huron was going to win the battle on his own. So Kulm counterattacked, and the epic duel began. Huron's claw turned Kuln's Stormbolter into scrap metal within the first millisecond. He broke the Loyalist's Iron Halo and shredded his Terminator armor until Kuln started bleeding internally. Huron kept yelling about how much he hated him and the Golden Throne. And now Kuln had enough. He turned to the Mad Leader and called him a traitor. He called him a fake king, no better than a Chaos Marine, who had destroyed the Astroclaws and more for his own petty pride. Huron went crazy. He howled and ran right at Kulm, who dodged and stabbed him with his sword. The sword went deep, deep enough to kill any other space marine, but not Huron. Huron turned and grabbed with his claw, slashing right into Kulm's chest and gracing his heart. Kulm was in incredible pain, but managed to somehow dodge back. It wasn't enough though. The damage had been done and Kulm collapsed, falling away. Huron laughed, knowing that for now, he had won. Unbeknownst to Huron and his fleet, the Imperials committed an incredibly risky plan and sent one of their ships down from space, filled with Thunderhawks, grazing the planet almost close enough to crash. The surviving Imperial Marines ran for their ship and got away, including Commander Kulm. 
Huron had won the battle, but his fleet was now in shambles due to the damage taken in the battle, barely space worthy, and all he had left was his home planet Badab. Badab was a deadly fortress. It had already destroyed an entire fleet at the start of the war, and was guarded in space by mines and huge guns, all controlled by a huge space fortress, Sentinel Sigma. Without destroying this epic fortress, there would be no way to attack Badab. The Imperial fleet re-emerged and was immediately attacked. But the fleet wasn't the weapon this time. Instead, the first ship was dragging something. Something burning. The burning core of a star. After a successful slingshot, the star core flew through space, ignoring all the weaponry firing at it. Tens of thousands of torpedoes and shells exploded on its surface. But the star was so hot, so blinding, that no ordinary weapon could harm it. The star stopped for a moment as it reached Sentinel Sigma's shield, but then completely enveloped the space station in fire. The loyal space marines followed the star and boarded the damaged station. The Astral Claws defended their station with insane skill, but were all killed in the process. The minefields, the guns, were now silent. The Ring of Steel was gone, and all that was left was the main prize, Badab, the final battlefield of this war. The last of the Astro Claws prepared to fight and die, but they did not have to wait long. Dozens of warships started to burn the planet, sending up so much smoke that day turned to night. Then came the Titan war machines, howling as they walked, followed by murderous space marines. The space sharks tore into Huron's last minions across the planet, until all that was left was Huron hiding inside his own palace of thorns. Even now, the Astro Claws would not surrender. On the second day, the space sharks decided to end the war their own way. They blew up the planet's atomic reactors, and the planet started to collapse, taking the fortress of thorns with it. Huron was not a fool and tried to run, his last men, all wearing red, were dying around him at an incredible rate. But Huron got unlucky. He was found by loyalist space marines before he could get to his ship, and a melted gun shot scraped his claw, which blew up violently. Half of him was burnt away in an instant, and his minions carried away what was left of their master's body. Badab was on fire, the cities were collapsing into lava, and one small ship managed to escape. Originally, the Loyalists thought it had 200 Astro Claws on board, and the body of one more. But as Lufthuron was presumed dead, they did not decide to chase. The Imperium assumed it had won. The surviving rebels, the Lamenters, the Mantis Warriors, and the Astro Claws were punished. The Salamanders, always the good guys, asked for mercy for the executioners. Huron and his men were forgotten, their honor and their glories written out of Imperial records. What was left of the Badab sector was given to other new chapters to watch and guard. But soon there were new stories, terrifying stories. The story of new Chaos space marines, wearing red, just like Huron's last servants. Led by a mysterious new warlord, half machine, horribly burned, and far more cunning and bloodthirsty than ever seen before. He spoke of a dream, of ruling his own empire, and destroying the Imperium and its loyal space marines. And of course, he had a name. Huron. Huron Blackheart. The Chaos Lord of the Red Corsairs. And he definitely was not going to pay his taxes. Alright, that about does it for today's video. The Bad of War is an incredibly in-depth engagement with decades of lore, so these videos have been a blast to make. If you're searching for another Warhammer 40k lore video to watch, then click right here on the screen. I specifically handpicked it just for you to make sure it would be a perfect fit. Thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, it helps me out more than you can imagine. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye! Thank <laughs> you.